Let's talk now about gaming and tech this week, nerds. In gaming and tech, we have Skydance Media and Paramount are about to make a sweet, sweet merger. We also have Apex Legends stirring controversy inside of its own little community and Bioshock 4 update to talk about. So let's do that, shall we? Welcome, nerds, to this week's edition of the Gaming and Tech News, generally speaking. Now, I'm no Linus or Spawnwave or Gamers Nexus or insert channel that is dedicated to the tech and gaming news here. That's not what you're getting here. This is just enough to keep you informed, generally speaking. We do this just about every week as part of a larger news show called The Week in Nerddom over on the main channel. You can find that linked down in the description or at the end of this video. Now let's talk about some gaming and tech and maybe even some like photo video kind of news as well. Okay, so the one that is the least interesting to me directly, I mean, I know there are larger implications here, but is where we're starting. Most of this episode is going to be follow-ups and or corrections, so just get used to it. We are in follow-ups right now. Our first one is Skydance and Paramount. Skydance Media founder David Ellison is in discussions currently to merge Skydance with Paramount Pictures. If they are successful in this merger, then it is going to create create a new entity called New Paramount with David Ellison at the helm of the company. Honestly, this probably wouldn't change a whole bunch aside from getting Paramount Pictures a little bit more liquid, a little bit more profitable is probably the better way to put that because Skydance Media has a lot of contracts with a lot of other companies in order to distribute their stuff. And so basically it would be Skydance like inheriting the back catalog from Paramount and then creating a new entity to create to go forth and make more content effectively. So very interesting situation kind of in the, the I mean, we are in the age of streaming. That's why I wanted to include this story is this is the ongoing conversation of streaming. We we live in this age where everything can be streamed for cheap-ish, maybe not for free, but still within reason. And it's not profitable. It's not good for the consumer because you don't own the things that you're streaming. You have a lease. You have permission to access a service. It is not yours to take home and break effectively. But it's also not doing anything good for the companies who are running the streaming services because they just keep merging or falling off or losing rights to this, that, and the other thing. So it's just an interesting situation. It's an interesting conversation to have. I'm very intrigued by the direction that our, our pop culture and media, entertainment media rather, is going right now. So yeah, we're going to be keeping eyes on things of that nature, but that's what we got there for Skydance and Paramount. Next up, we have Apex Legends getting into a little bit of trouble. Why is Apex getting in trouble, you ask? Well, it would seem that they have changed the way their Battle Pass system works. Previously, you would buy the Battle Pass and it would get you through the entire season, and you could unlock all of the things. There were a lot of tier skipping situations going on in their Battle Passes previously. And it, everybody was relatively happy. Like, yes, it is modern gaming, so there's a certain level of, oh man, why can't they make this better? But with that taken into consideration, everyone, for the most part, in the community of Apex Legends was happy with the end result. Well, they've changed it. As of Season 22, it is now, if you're just buying the cheapest version of the bundle, you now have to purchase two different battle passes per season. The first one is the first half of the season, the second one obviously the second half of the season. So theoretically you could get into a season and, and you can do it for cheaper if you're grinding real hard. I don't know, it wasn't explicitly laid out as to whether or not if you completed the entire tiers, it was not laid out that it, whether or not if you complete the tier of tiers, the however many tiers are available to you per season, if you only pay for the short, the first short battle pass and not the second one, if that was possible, or if only certain content was available for the second half, so you would have to spend the 20 bucks to get the entire season, or you can get the premium battle pass, which is 20 bucks, but that one 
used to come with, like I said, a, some tier skipping, so you could just not have to worry about the grind as much. Well, it seems that this new season, again, 22, is bringing with it less of the tier skips, and this is, these two things both combined very much scream money grab. But they also, the other functionality they took away is you can't buy your battle pass with in-game currency. You can only do it, like you have to convert your your real world currency into the game currency in order to do this, which I'm pretty, it's been, I don't know that I've ever bought a battle pass for Apex, so I could be misremembering this, but I'm pretty sure there are multiple game currencies, one of which is you earn while playing the game, the other of which is, you know, the pay as you go kind of stuff because it is a free to play game. So. Yeah, less less of the awesome and more of the money grabbing. Again, we live in a, a situation where like this is similar to the streaming services because it's a free to play. So they don't make their money off the fact that you're existing there. They make their money off of you wanting to stay there and look cool. It's not an apples to apples comparison to the streaming services as far as movies and TV shows go, but it's pretty similar in that in that you don't own these things. You don't own the game Apex Legends. You have a lease to play the game. So when things change, you kind of just have to roll with it or stop playing. But yeah, this this is the the community is very much up in arms about this. So if anything changes, we'll definitely be talking about it. But otherwise, let's continue on. Our final piece of regular ass news, or, or sorry, of follow up news is Bioshock 4 here in gaming and tech. So Bioshock 4 is being developed by Cloud Chamber. And according to their senior cinematic designer, Jeff Spoonhauer, sorry, I had to read that, uh, the studio is hiring for a bunch of different positions so that they can properly begin the pre-production phase for Bioshock 4, which definitely implies that we are a few years away from it seeing the light of day, but still, that is a good sign that they're putting in the work for Bioshock 4, finally, because we've been waiting for They said they were going to do it, and now they're following through. So that's wonderful. This has also brought up some rumor issues, which we will be talking about in the rumor mill when we get to that point. So yeah, Bioshock 4, they are gearing up for pre-production. And this isn't the kind of pre-production where it's like the development, the very beginning stages of development. This is pre-production where they're actually going to go in and start writing the code and doing the design and all that stuff. So that's pretty great. That is, though, what we have for the news portions of Gaming and Tech this week. And all that leaves is suggestions. Our suggestion this week for Gaming and Tech, it is kind of in its death throes, so don't expect miracles necessarily. But Halo Infinite, I don't think it has ever been as good as it is right now. A couple of balance patches have come out since we last spoke about Halo Infinite. We also got the official announcement, or the unofficial leaked announcement, I guess, is more appropriate that they are moving on to the next Halo game in the franchise. So they're going to be slowing down the development on Halo Infinite until they just stop supporting it entirely. But while they are still supporting it, you should go play. That is your suggestion for the week, just because it's incredible fun. That brings us to the end of the video, nerds. Thank you very much for joining me for the news. Once again, there is a full and probably much more up-to-date and recent episode of the news, the full-length version, if you will, called The Week in Nerdom over on the main channel, linked down in the description and probably link popping up somewhere around my face right about now. So click on that, go check that out as well. Or if you prefer your news in more truncated pieces, then by all means, just stick around here and go check out some of the other stuff we offer on this channel. Thank you very much for joining me. We will see you in the next one. Before we go, always, always remember, nerds, that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here.